in SAT math, there are either formulas you know or you don't know. And now these formulas aren't in your formula sheet that you're given before the SAT, but there are still formulas that you need to know in order to solve certain problems or shortcuts to those formulas that you still need to understand. Oh God. So when I was taking my first SAT, I'm going to explain my mean median mode story. It's kind of embarrassing. Well, uh, I was practicing math beforehand and math is definitely my strong suit. So I was getting better and better at it. And I was aiming for a score and at least like 1750 was my benchmark. I was really good at math and I, I kind of had this egotistical cockiness about it that I know everything and I'm going to do well on it. And that was true for like 90% of the test, but the most simplest thing, mean, median, mode, and I knew what mean was. I knew that was average, but I didn't know the difference between median and mode. I had learned it such a long time ago and I completely forgot what it was. Now I still got that question correct, but it left some things up to chance and in a different universe that might not have been the case. So you need to learn all of these concepts and even something as important as that is something that you should memorize. Now I have a math ideology. And if you've watched the channel before, you know that I, there's always two methods to solve a question. There's the long method and the short method. And you always want to prioritize the, sh the short method. Why would you do something that takes longer? Why would you do something that's more effort for the same result? Now, a, a beginning lesson for all of these formulas they're going to teach you memorize the concept, not the explicit formula. I'm not going to give you explicit formulas unless it's really necessary and you should memorize the concept. Now a 1600 score or at least an 800 score in math would know all of these concepts by heart, by intuition. They fully understand every single part of it. And not only do they have the formula memorized, they also fully understand the concept so they can apply it in any realm. Now here are three formulas that you need to know for SAT math. Okay, so first one is circles and completing the square. Now this concept is kind of like, it seems difficult, but it's really not. Now arc length and sectors of circles, that's literally the simplest thing ever. All you wanna do is calculate the proportion of the angle. What angle percent is that of the entire circle? And then either multiply that by area if you're looking for a section or multiply that by the diameter, which is just pi times D for the arc length. Now, circle formula, right? Just read that formula. Literally read that formula. H is going to be, so for the center, H and K, H is the X and Y and K is the Y. Th those are going to be your coordinates for the center of the circle. And R is going to be your radius. And it's always given as R squared. So it's literally as simple as that. So if it's X plus H, then your X coordinate for your center is actually negative, right? And here's the concept of completing the square. Basically, it it's... Honestly, this is the most complex part, but it's still not that hard to understand. Basically, you have a certain like quadratic function and you need to simply you need to complete the square in order to turn it into the circle formula. So what you do is you isolate the value of you want to create basically at the top there x plus b over 2 squared, right? And how we do that is we take the value that's in the number right? And then we subtract it on the outside. So it relies on this concept of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is equal to that whole thing simplified, right? That's one of the main rules of simplifying quadratics. And we want to use that and subtract the b squared value from both sides so we can get the same function. So literally in that example, you can pause to read and understand it. We're literally just taking one side of it and subtracting it in the other because the b term is exactly the same. 2ab is 6x in that scenario. Now, for an example of proportions. Now, basically, it's th this question is pretty simple. It's just asking us what fraction area it is. And literally, it's 100 degrees. A circle is 360. That's literally the answer. It's 100 over 360. Now, I didn't bother to simplify that, and you should on the SAT, and you should if you're in one of the bubbling questions, but that's literally the answer. It's just the proportion of the angle. And it if it asks us for area, we multiply by the total area. You have the formula for that. And if it asks for the length of the arc, it's just the percentage of the entire circumference. It's as easy as that. Now, here are some even more examples. This one is the complicated example, which involves the uh, simplifying the square. So we have that equation right there. And immediately we want to isolate X by itself. So it makes it easier to do it, right? Because we can't take the square, like we don't want to have square roots in when we're doing completing the square, it makes it harder. So we want to divide the whole thing by two, right? And then we get, obviously we get everything is the same, right? The six becomes a three and the 45 becomes 45 divided by two. And then what we want to do 
is then basically complete the square with that function. So we need to add b over 2, right? And b over 2 is negative 3 over 2. We square that. And then for the y function, it's half. And we square that. And then we add it to either ends of the equation. So we add it to the 45 divided by 2 part and the original part, as you can see in the second portion there. Now, in the last portion, like I use the concept of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and it's simplification, right? And for the first one, it's just a minus b squared. And for the second one, it's a plus b squared, right? Because there's a negative sign in between x squared and 3x on the second on the second line. So in the third line, we literally have our circle equation. We have our minus h, we have our minus k, right? It was actually like plus here because that's a negative value. And then we have our r squared. So if 25 is r squared, r is 5. That's the answer. Now, the distance formula shortcut. Everyone, you don't have to memorize the distance formula, and I think it's really dumb too, right? Because the distance formula is derived from the Pythagorean theorem, and everybody knows a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's one of the most like famous math formulas, you could say. So literally just use the, the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> now, figure out what the distance is by having that distance be the hypotenuse and then just making the triangle and solving for the hypotenuse. Now, here's an example. So you have this graph here, pause to read, and we know if you just read the graph, it's three across and seven up, right? So we know our A value is three squared, our B value is seven, or A is three, B is seven. You square both the bows, it equals C. So C squared equals 58. So the answer is the square root of 58. It's that simple. Don't memorize the distance formula. Now, trig and triangles. You're going to need to know these two concepts like the back of your hand. Like, so Katoa is something you have to completely memorize. And if you don't know what that is, just literally look it up and then do like Khan Academy has a full thing on it. And I want you to just go through that because that's very essential to know for the SAT. And the complementary, complementary trig rule, right? That sine is equal to cosine 90 degrees minus X. It's basically, they mean the same thing, except they're proportioned differently. Like if you just rotated which one, which angle you're talking about and just did cosine, it would equal the same thing because it's on the same triangle. So similar triangles are literally just like, you just need to be able to identify them if they have all the same angle angles or all the same lengths or proportional lengths. Now, here's an example. Complementary. This one uses the complementary method, right? So sine of an angle is equal to four fifths. What's cosine 90 degrees minus that same angle, right? It's four fifths. That's just using the complementary method. And again, if you need help with SOKATOA, literally just go on Khan Academy and run through what SOKATOA means because if you just, you just need to fully understand that. There's not, there's nothing I can just give you that'll make you understand that very quickly. Okay. Here's some final tips. Know the difference, right? Know the difference between integers, whole numbers, real numbers. I have this diagram here on the right that simplifies it pretty quickly. Those are all rational numbers, right? All fractions, negative numbers. Integers is zero, negative, positive numbers. Whole numbers is just zero and all the positive like numbers, the whole ones. And then natural numbers is just all whole numbers except zero. So these are all like nat like natural numbers, every single natural number is a rational number, right? That's a basic de Venn diagram. And you also have irrational numbers. You need to know the difference. And obviously based on my story in the beginning, no mean, median, and mode and standard deviation. That's just how far spread apart the data is. If the data is spread apart a lot, then your standard deviation is a lot. If it's like very tight, then your standard deviation is small. Right. And know the degrees to radians conversion. I, I don't like to just multiply by a certain thing to figure it out. I just know that two pi is equal to 360 degrees and create a proportion for whatever your degrees is or whatever your radians is. Multiply it out and you can simply get the answer. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you learned something today.